season. They also took on UCLA and fell over at Poly Pavilion. Now the USC Trojans with Ethan Anderson getting the start in the backcourt along with Boogie Ellis looking to shake off an 0-for-10 shooting performance in a win over Eastern Kentucky most recently. Peterson, Goodwin, and Mobley complete the starting five for Andy Enfield, the reigning Pac-12 Coach of the Year. As for the beach, they're without Joe Hampton, front court player averaging 12 points per game. So that's a big loss for them today. Talked about Joel. This is the first Sunday game of the season for USC. And a wonderful crowd inside this spectacular facility to see an undefeated program try and get to 10 wins. A group that already has three true road wins on its resume and a couple of league victories as well. Here's Drew Peterson. Anderson getting a start today. He and Agbon Polo have been kind of switching in and out and rotating of who's starting. I think Anderson today, because of the matchup with Joel Murray, he's going to start on him on the defensive end. Anderson on the look opposite from Mobley. Got it to go to start the game. Uh, he shot it well so far this year. 48% from three. Not a ton of attempts, but even still. Remember, he came came here to USC, JB, as a non-shooter. And has really worked hard to become a capable three-point shooter. Shooting it well this year. Has worked on his game. Has also worked on his body. Yes. Looking to answer and hitting. Colin Slater, a senior in his sixth year of college basketball. Well, we highlighted Murray in the open, but it was Slater as well, taking tough shots against UCLA, but making a ton of tough shots. You mentioned the 27 he had. You don't want guys like Murray and Slater to get going because sometimes it's hard to turn them off, as UCLA found out. How much of a priority is it for you to get Boogie Ellis right if you're USC tonight? Well, you don't want to force it, though. That's the thing. You're coming off an offer. The last thing you want is to, to, to manufacture a shot for him and him start pressing again. I think that's what happened the other night is he missed his first few and then just started pressing and continued to miss. Jordan Roberts able to finish in transition. And if I'm Boogie Ellis, if I'm Boogie Ellis, I maybe try and get an easy one. Like that, to start off with a, a deep contested three, that's not the way you get yourself back on track. Maybe get to the foul line, try and get something in transition. But in the half court, taking a deep three after going 0 for 10, 0 for 7 from three, probably isn't the best way to get yourself back on track. Followed by a turnover, and USC had a season-high 18 of them against Eastern Kentucky, a game that was never really in doubt. No, and I would chalk that one up to playing the scoreboard a little bit in the second half. They had a big lead and just got careless with it, and that's what Eastern Kentucky does is turn people over. So not that concerned with it unless it carries over into today. Back-to-back -back buckets for Jordan Roberts in a 7-2 start for the beach. Peterson got on track from the three-point line midweek. Here he finds Mobley, who made his first five from distance, a new career high three-point shooting. Get at the free-throw line here. Well, perimeter shots to start, JB, for USC. But they have a decided size advantage against Long Beach. I'd like to see him dump it in there to Mobley or Goodwin, put some pressure on that Long Beach defense early. Don, here's made threes by season for Isaiah. Eight as a freshman, 17 as a sophomore, already 14 as a junior, and doing it at a 41% clip. Well, that's what I said in our open. Like, I, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't continue. He's getting good looks because of the matchups he gets. He can play inside, he can play outside, so he's typically, typically going to get a bigger guy on him. Drag him out to the three-point line. They don't. The other big guys aren't going to want to contest all the way out there. Three off the free throw line. And Long Beach is going to want to get it down the court and put pressure on you. They're driving, looking to score, looking to kick out. But they're off to a good start. And this is a dangerous thing, JB. You and I do so many of these non conference games where the road team, you let them get off to a good start, and they're there all night. The boogie, this one rattles out after the putback by Triore at the beach end. That was the key against Eastern Kentucky the other night, is that they didn't let him get started from behind the three-point line, and they never did. Ellis turns this one down to put it down. Gets to the lane. Not even a layup will fall, though that one contested. Anderson fires down to Chavez Goodwin. Put the contact and converts to find that whistle. That's all day, though. Why, why wouldn't you start there with Goodwin? And then once Long Beach defense starts collapsing, 
Then you start kicking it out to shooters. But I would start down there on the paint with Goodwin and Mobley. Don't, I don't see anybody on Long Beach that can deal with those two down there deep in the paint. Anderson hanging on Murray. Goodwin challenged the layup, and it's pulled down by Mobley. Now Ethan Anderson will push. Peterson spotting up. Yes. I think only a matter of time. You and I were here on Tuesday, and coming in with shooting not a great percentage, but they'll get back on track. He's too good of a shooter to be shooting what he's shooting right now. As that jumper falls for Roberts, who's had a great start. The the look for Peterson strikes me as more fluid, less hesitation as he let that one yeah. go. And get it in rhythm. Like the static threes are so hard, JB. When you're stationary and the ball swings you, and your and your and your feet are flat, versus moving into it, catch it in rhythm. Usually you stay in rhythm and knock it down. The transition opportunity for the beach. It falls off for Joel Murray. Collects his own. Goes up with the left and scores it. Timeout, Andy Enfield, after a 13-9 jump for the visitors. Well, again, Long Beach got off fast, and they're continuing to go. Robert, bucket after bucket, 13-9. Beach, uh, how they're supposed to, or how we're accustomed to, Lincoln Riley getting this UFC football program back going. I think you're right to credit President Fultz and Director of Athletics Mike Bone for the search, the hire, the leadership throughout this process. It is a game changer in the Pac-12 and in the West. And as for the undefeated men's basketball program, down four against the beach early. Peterson thought about rotating it, now dips in. Nice fine on the weak side. The cut, as you pointed out, by Max Agbon Polo, who's fouled. Just look at the size discrepancy out there, JB, between USC and Long Beach, like, across the board, except for Anderson. So, Peterson on the block, Mobley on the block. You're probably not going to ISO post Morgan, but certainly Drew Peterson and Isaiah Mobley, you will. Should point out that the beach is without their seven-footer Trevor Irish today on his way back from an injury But not quite ready Mobley ready to catch and shoot and knock down the three but Once you have a game like you had against Eastern Kentucky you go five or six your confidence is sky high And so if you hit your first couple the next game There's a good chance that his confidence is going to stay where it's at Roberts pretty confident after a six-point shooting star six to 13 belong to him for the visitors Here's Ethan Anderson backing down Finding Peterson shakes his first defender comes to a jump stop loves that ball away. hit from the elbow Turned that into a tough shot though didn't he? It should have just been one bounce dribble pull He took that extra dribble and got into traffic, but knocked down that difficult turnaround Reminiscent of the key shot he hits on the pollute yeah. in their second Pac-12 victory now, Drew Peterson does so many things and Mobley out there. They don't want to close all the way out there to him and then right there, you see that? He said that one bounce dribble was available. Got the deuce anyway. Important piece of the uh, Drew Peterson and scouting report accomplished pregame, Dom. Yes. As uh, coffee nerds ourselves, we had a chance to talk some brew with Peterson. He's got a whole routine with it. Takes a few sips every time he goes into the locker room. I didn't like the crowd. Huh? Knocks down another tough fadeaway. I didn't like the caffeine before games, but apparently he does. You like it before games now, though. Oh, and do it games. without it. 22-year-old <laughs> Drew Peterson helping the Trojans get back on the high side. A three-point lead at the 14-minute mark. Well, this looks more like the USC Trojan team we've seen so far here in the non-conference. Slow start, but picking it up now. Traore denied by Mobley. Agbonk Polo on the move. Tried to skip it to Anderson. Should point out that uh, Joshua Morgan, six foot eleven, post for USC, is on the floor. He's a former member of the Beach program. Mm -hmm. In fact, set their single season blocks record as the Big West Defensive Player of the Year before moving over to USC the last couple seasons. One thing that's evolving for USC, JB, we've talked so much about how good their defense has been, is offensively is moving the ball. They got guys that can score. They have 23 assists against Eastern Kentucky, which is a good number. But continuing to work on that, getting the ball from one side of the court to the other, guys moving without the ball, makes you that much more difficult to guard instead of isos. Polo can't pay off the extra pass from Ethan Anderson. So a stop for the beach. Now a pull-up. 
Joe Murray. Trying to get him going. Now it's better than 16 per to lead the beach. When you're on the road against a jump up in competition, you need your leading scorer to show up. He can't not. He doesn't have to be your leading scorer, but he's got to score. Back on Polo, bodying his way to the lead before coughing it up. Cobb on the move. So, JP, that's what I think they're trying to get away from. Agbon Polo trying to get his own, manufacture his own. You, you're a deep, talented roster. You don't need to do it by yourself. And they're turning it over again here today after uncharacteristically turning it over against Eastern Kentucky. They've been good all year taking care of the ball. Too many on Tuesday seems to be carrying over to this afternoon. Four in the early going here. And the beach gives it right back. You see fewer than 10 per game yeah. this season. Best in the Pac-12. But it was fewer than nine before the Eastern Kentucky game. So you don't want that to start trending up if you're UFC. Boogie Ellis back in for Andy Enfield. Well, two-man uh, game with Mobley here. If you're Andy Enfield, you hope Boogie knocks down a couple today. He doesn't have to go bananas, but you don't want to turn this to turn into a thing for Boogie Ellis where he's all of a sudden pressing, losing some confidence. Hopefully, he knocks a few down here this afternoon. Now it's Reese Dixon Waters, a Long Beach Products. Extra possession for Drew Cobb on the beach here. Got Morgan lifted and put a personal foul on him. You know, Morgan's a very good shot blocker. Uncharacteristic of him there to get off his feet. He's so long. Like he doesn't need, even need to get off his feet to block a lot of shots. Last time these programs met, he went for 11 points, six rebounds, four blocks back in 2019 against USC. And Yeko Okongwu, Big O, had 28 and 12 as USC prevailed. If Big O gets back at some point. He's still not playing for the Atlanta Hawks with that shoulder surgery that he had. Talented young player. Drew Cobb at the free throw line. Came in as a walk-on on the scholarship before last season. And a senior from Sacramento. He's built a reputation as a defensive stopper for this program. Well, Dan Munson's teams over the years, they play hard. And if they get it going on the offensive end, you got a problem on your home floor. And they got off to a good start here. USC's kind of righted the ship, but still only a two-point lead. Boogie Ellis picked up by Colin Slater. 2-3 zone for Long Beach. Probably looking over the top. Finds the wing shooter. Three sticks and waters off the bench. Not known as a shooter, but again, if you see a couple go down, it's 5 of 11 coming into this game from behind the three-point line. See, be good if his confidence grew from behind the three-point line. Slater hands off to Eddie Scott in the game for the beach. There's Morgan to reject. Akbon Polo claims it for USC. You see the size on the offensive end. You see the size on the defensive end. Max trying to go coast to coast. It'll go back to Long Beach State when we continue. The depth of USC on display on this Sunday afternoon. Reese Dixon Waters from deep. But you still rose up and won the games. And to me, that says a lot about where both these teams are at. And you and I were in Tucson Wednesday, JB. And I said this. Wherever you thought Arizona was before the season started, you undervalued them, us included. Because where they are now yes. is number one in the net rankings. Undefeated are the Pac-12, as are these USC Trojans. Romancel in the game, facing up on Morgan. Now back to the basket. Morgan commits his second foul. Going for the pump fake again, got off his feet. Now let's call Joseph 24, Joshua Morgan. See, just be solid, Morgan. See, that's a problem shot blockers sometimes. They, they want to block everything. He wasn't really in position to block that. A lot of your blocks as a big guy come as a secondary defender, not as a straight up. You're blocking shot, the shot of the guy you're guarding, and so you're susceptible to the pump fake when you do that. If, if you're guarding the ball, you should be thinking more about I'm in position, my hands are up, I just need to get them to miss. Let's let's worry about blocking shots on the weak side, getting after it so we avoid fouls. Max 
Hansel missed both. After missing the Bethesda game, the most recent win for the beach with a shoulder injury, USC is on a 12-3 run over the last five minutes. You know, one thing, getting back to Boogie Ellis, one thing that he is, is, is learning and working on as he's going along here is moving without the ball. You know, he's been on the ball most of his career, but USC's got multiple guys that can initiate offense, can, can run fast breaks. So he's got to get better at moving without the ball. And the reason that's important, Peterson knocks out another tough shot, is he's going to play off the ball, and he's a good shooter. Like a lot of guys that are on the ball strictly, they can't play off the ball because they can't shoot. But Boogie Ellis can shoot, so he needs to get good at moving without the ball, getting to spots so that he can knock down shots and space the floor for this USC team. Murray to Roberts, 10 to shoot. Pulls up for a long two. One and done for the beach. He should have let that one fly. Peterson's got it going. Heat checker already. I think a week ago, Ellis lets that one fly from the top two. Just a little bit gun shy as it stands. Or maybe Drew can only hit the degree of difficulty. And that was late clock, so he had to, but even still went in. A couple fadeaways that have been contested and tough have gone in. He's got nine of the 23 for USC. Must be the coffee. A caffeinated Drew Peterson. Dixie Waters has been good as well. That one carries off into the hands of Roberts. He'll bring it himself. See the explosiveness, JB of USC. Jones with a knockdown three. Jadon Jones, a Long Beach they, product. They turned it over. They let Long Beach get started early, but yet they still got. Well, they had a seven-point lead, so they can flip it pretty quick. Agbonkolo gets it to fall. Because of that reason, though, it's like it's not one guy for USC. It's not like Mobley has to get 20 or Goodwin or Boogie. They got a lot of guys that can score. So if you key on anybody, the other guys are going to get you. USC had Murray surrounded and a late whistle goes against Dixon Waters. Well, Agbonk Polo has made a jump from last year to this year. And talking to the coaches, they they loved what he did this offseason. Hasn't translated into big numbers, but better numbers. And I think once he gets confident again from the three-point line, he's 7 for 28 coming in. I think you're really going to see a different player. At 12 points, 5 assists last time out. Mm -hmm. Efficiency is the key, right? Yeah. Like, Max's numbers may not be big in the box score, but over 40 minutes projection, right. he's coming off and making an impact. But, but the key is him making shots. That's what he does. Like, he's a good three-point shooter. So if he's not making threes, he can still help you win, but he's out there to space the floor. Uh, Father Joel Murray defensively here. What a clever play by Murray to get to the free throw line. Same thing I just said about Morgan. Say about that play. All you have to do is be big. You're 6'9", six, 6'8". Six, Playing a six-foot guy. You don't need to block that. He can hardly see over the top of you anyway. So you get him to pick up his dribble at the elbow. You've already won. Up. That's what people don't understand about defense. Players, a lot of players. And you learn this when you get to the NBA. You don't need to steal it. You don't need to block it. You just need to get him to miss. So that your team can go get the rebound. And that's something that the length of USC does right. very, very consistently right. on their defensive board. Just be big, get them to miss, and then go get the rebound. Peterson, middle of the floor. Picks out Dixon Waters, who wasn't ready to shoot it, and turns it over. Fifth giveaway for USC. Murray thought about it. Waiting for Roberts. And a three-point opportunity for Abubakar Traore. A good ball movement by the beach here. Interior passing not easy against a big team. Found a way that time. That's Triore's game. You mentioned he had a uh, 20 rebound game. Just the sixth Long Beach State player in the 72 year history of the program to grab 20 in a game. He's also leading them at 70% from the floor. So what does that tell you about where he takes his shots? How many 6-5 guys have gotten 20 rebounds in a game though? I mean, that's impressive. 
Ten's a lot of rebounds for a, for a game, especially for a 6'5 guy. 20? Eight-minute mark opening half. A one-point lead for undefeated USC. Zone look for Beach again. So he put Mobley in the middle of it. A score that, yeah. Takes advantage of a favorable carom. He was looking to pass it out. It's like, you got a layup. And assisted himself on that yeah, play. Right? Murray with the answer. This guy Murray is going to give the Big West fits this year. You put 30 on a very good UCLA defense. See what he winds up with here this afternoon against a very good USC defense. Like, what's Pacific going to do with it? <laughs> or, or Riverside or whoever in the Big West. Maybe can't buy one. Maybe here on the move. Off the steal. There's the whistle. All right, so a trip to the free throw line for Boogie Ellis trying to break the drought when we continue. Wednesday, we're bringing you Pac-12 this morning. Kicking off the early signing period with Guy Averman and Yogi Roth. Join us Wednesday morning at 8. Picks up more of the scoring load. But you didn't want it to turn into something where the other team's short closing now right. on Peterson, not guarding him, and it becomes a whole thing, and it kills your spacing. So if he if he is back on track, which it looks like he is to me, and that three-point percentage starts coming up, it provides more balance offensively for this USC team. Maybe a trip to the foul line is just what the doctor ordered for Ellis. Let's see. He sees a couple clean free throws go through and builds the USC lead back to three. A little oh, pester two, pressure here. Yeah, 2-2-1, two, two, drop back in demand. Look at the length. I think Peters has got a piece of that. Goodwin claims the rebound. Peterson faking that dribble handoff. Works his way to the lane. Wanted the foul, no whistle. Out to Roberts. He's going to turn his head. Look, he didn't know he had two defenders on him. He had kickouts there for open shots. I know he can make that tough turnaround, but there's some contact there. He's got. If he's going to back guys down, you have to have your head moving back and forth, seeing where your teammates are at, but also, more importantly, seeing if there's secondary defenders coming. Foul on the floor. And Chavez Goodwin bumped the driver. Collins later. When you have your back to the defense and the defender, your head becomes very important, your eyes, to see what's going on behind you. Because obviously you have your back to everybody. First personal foul on Goodwin. Six on USC. Nice drop off to the baseline. Extra pass Roberts. He'll shoot a couple of free throws. He owes Joel Murray an assist. Well, still a one possession game and so as much as we felt like USC Woke up if you will Long Beach still hanging around here There's a point that we've made with the trip to Pauly and with the way that Dan Munson has typically scheduled is they're not intimidated They don't care what your ranking is what your recruiting looks like well, Beach comes to play you and I have done a bunch of games already this year, but when, when Long Beach State plays USC There's a good chance a lot of these guys have played against each other a lot growing up in high school So yeah, they're they're not coming in here. They've probably got a ton the guys that are local have, have a ton of friends and family here. I'm sure This isn't a big deal for them well, we had to work hard for that rebound off the missed foul shot. Ethan Anderson back in to run the show for Andy Enfield. Mobley, a one pass three. Good one, claims it. And he was fouled in the process. Bubakar Traore picks up his second personal. Fifth on the beach. They've done a pretty good job on good ones. He really, he's only gotten one FGA so far. I, I, I was looking for USC to really establish him early. Based on Long Beach's lack of size, or at least compared to USC, as their primary back to the basket threat. Peterson to the foul line. Intercepted and stolen. Turnover number six by USC. Anderson back, and the putback for Triore. He's got some instincts to rebound, doesn't he? He was there first. I know it was a, he was trailing the play, but even still, he was up there before. 
anybody else to put that back. Cody Johnson had it taken away. Long Beach can take the lead here. Murray working against the freshman. And they have taken the advantage of Galen Center. Well, turnovers have really hurt USC. And uncharacteristic, again, we mentioned it earlier, they've been very good about not turning it over all year until the second half on Tuesday. But it's continuing here in the first half today. Chavez Goodwin can try Ore. A lengthy six file behind the back in transition. Offensive foul. A heads up play by Johnson there because Long Beach had numbers. They were going to score again and push this lead out to three. But nice job by Johnson to step in there and take the hit outside the RA. Mobley on the block. Gives it right back. Let's take another look at that play. You know where I'm going with this, JB. So it's not going to be a flop warning because it was called as an offensive foul. Let's move on. Offensive initiated contact, an area of concentration for officials across college basketball. There is contact, though, in basketball. Like it, there is. It's not a game played with no one touching each other. Everybody have your head. Jadon Jones, who leads the Beach in three-point shooting sends it in. Well, I guess I need to mention my obligatory every time this happens, the longer you let the lesser team hang around, the more confidence they get, the more they think they can win the game. And it would help if USC made a run here to close the first half to lessen that for, for Long Beach. Because right now, they're thinking they can win this game. After another bucket by one of those Southern California products from El Mansell, third year at the beach by way of Playa del Rey. Good one to the corner. Ethan Anderson didn't want the three, gives it back to his boot. Good one's so good at that. He's got such a great touch. Those little flip shots he makes aren't the easiest, but he doesn't ever seem to miss them. And the infield called that travel for the officials. So USC will have it when we return, trailing by one, trying to protect their unbeaten mark in search of their 10th win. Ethan Anderson to Chavez Goodwin. Hey, I'm going to get some snacks. Okay. Oh, please don't leave me again. Jane, I said I was sorry. You drove away and left me at the station for three hours. I They're excited about him here. This place just erupted when they announced him. He's taken in all of the first half so far. We'll see when he leaves to go recruit some more. <laughs> Maybe halftime. <laughs> He's recruiting right now over there. Back Von Polo off the handoff. It's two feet in the lane. Now dead on the dribble. Seven to shoot. Dixon Waters has it. Back Von Polo out of bounds. And the turnover woes continue. Yeah. Nine for USC. You wonder why. It's interesting how you're so good with it to start the year. And then that second half against Eastern Kentucky is really carried over to today. I think this defense for the beach is different than many of the ones that I've seen USC pick apart so far whether it's the way they're playing it or the personnel within it yeah you just haven't seen Mobley get to that foul line and take his pick of options the way they typically do Colin Slater tough three won't go Chavez Goodwin flat-footed rebound up to Peter and also I've mentioned it a couple times JB and it's a real thing like the hangover from finals week is yeah. real you know you're, you're emotionally and mentally exhausted so you're a little loose with the ball as Dixon Waters knocks down another one he's playing well here this afternoon three of four from the floor the beach was matched up that time at the defensive end USC back in front by one 
And now it's the Trojans' turn to play a bit of zone. Cobb in the middle of it. That is a big zone, man. It's some length. They'll almost invite you to pass into the middle of it with a guard like Cobb. Kind of like the Syracuse zone, the Mike Hopkins zone at Washington. We'll, we'll give you the foul line. We'll give you the foul line. We're not going to give you anything else. Dan Munson will take his use it or lose it timeout. Will, intensity, tenacity, whatever you want to call it, to impose your will on Long Beach. That was Next Diva Team Talk when you need to talk with your team. Always use Next Diva. See if USC can keep the lead going into halftime this last couple minutes. Zone again. Centurion passing, but a block from Goodwin. Uh, not surprised we're seeing some zone from USC. Long Beach 33% from three coming in. So I don't think USC feels threatened by the long ball from Long Beach State. Goodwin left alone on the perimeter, gets to his comfort zone. That's, that's literally the first one I've, I've seen him miss a though. <laughs> this is Tobias Rodegar, a redshirt freshman from Norway via UAB. Well, one time the game. One, one thing Long Beach is doing is when they get a stop, they're getting it down the court and getting it either into the paint or out to shooters before that USC defense gets set. Big reason why they've had success here on the offensive end. Midway point of the shot clock. Mobley backs his man down. Finds Agbon Polo. Defensive board for Mansell. I'd rather see Isaiah just put that up on the rim. And if he misses, Agbon Polo and Goodwin were in position to go get it. It's a tough little shot for Agbon Polo. One he should make, but not the easiest in the world. Murray, seeing Akbar Polo as that second defender. Spots Cobb for three. Drew Cobb. Well, Long Beach has got the momentum now. I think even if SC scores here, they're in the game. They can make them win it now. Shot clock turned off. So Mobley, Peterson, Dixon Waters, and USC. With five, Drew Peterson. Cobb on the switch. Now with two. Got a clean look. And hit it. Heading to the half. Drew Peterson. Locks it up at 38. Uh, he got a ball screen from Mobley. Refused it. Then it just become a, became a straight ISO. Walk a mile in my shoes. Trojans being pushed on their home floor by the beach USC will start on defense you mentioned it earlier JB great crowd here this afternoon for USC they need to get the crowd involved with some highlight plays some stops some transition like we don't normally see this many people here in Galen they should use it to their advantage especially in a tie game here at halftime now Jordan Roberts had a nice first half couldn't capitalize there on a good play out of the break so now USC with a stop in the basketball. Trying to break a 38 up top. Long Beach switching everything up top. Yellis with a couple of fouls, limited to 10 minutes. 0 of 4 shooting. Ethan Anderson. That rattles out. Playing on a bounce by Joel Murray. Pretty good look, though. Very speeding pass. Mobley does enough to stay in front. Puts his back to Ethan Anderson. Now goes. Scoops it over to Roberts. Up and under, and a trip to the free throw line. You know, when you're smaller than the opponent, but you still want to attack the rim, interior passing becomes important. And there's been a couple instances here this afternoon where Long Beach got either a layup or got fouled because of their ability to pass in tight spaces. Roberts at the line, a 77% shooter, a senior from Bakersfield. 
something Long Beach State probably wishes it had done better in that first half. Four of nine from the foul line, and now four of ten for Dan Munson. How about that, though? And we haven't mentioned it yet today because they haven't gotten there very much, but Long Beach 65% from the foul line, which is better than USC at the foul line. USC only 57% at the free throw line coming in. First points of the second half, still out there for the taking for USC. Peterson curls off the Goodwin screen. See, that's where I'm going. Inside? Yeah, and then make, make, if they want to bring secondary defenders, now you got to kick out the shooters. Peterson off the shot fake. Goodwin on the offensive glass. Got to go. You put Mobley and Goodwin on both blocks, what's Long Beach going to do? Very little foul trouble to speak of for the visitors, to your point about USC not necessarily dictating the action at that end of the floor. Mm -hmm. Slater into the hands of Jadon Jones. Isaiah Mobley has it on the defensive board. There's been much transition opportunity here this afternoon for USC. Isaiah over the top of Roberts. One thing you don't want to happen, though, and this is... We've seen it. Mobley's really confident from behind the three-point line, right? We don't want him spending the whole game out there either. It's great that you can make one, and we want you to make two, three, four, five a game, but we also need you to get inside and put pressure on the defense in the paint, too. Single digits on the timer as Joel Murray operates off the bounce. Pulls up from the elbow. Mobley goes to get it. Bring it. That numbers. Mobley, extra pass. Ethan Anderson. He'll knock it down. Teed it up, though. Took too much time. I hate that, and I mention it all the time. It doesn't matter how much time you have. You should catch and shoot at the same cadence every time, whether the guy's three feet away or 13 feet away. There's a gift on a turnover from the beach, and she does good one. We'll get free throws out of it. You're the analytics guy. I wonder if there's a stat of a guy that, like, gets a wide-open three that takes more time to release it then in a normal rhythm, there's a guy closing out on you because they never make it. Whenever you see a guy in the corner taking his time and lining it up and teeing it up, they always miss it. On this NFL Sunday, it's an interesting time to be asking that question. It's almost like time to throw for a quarterback. If you took a shooter's average, average time to release, and compared it to an opportunity like this for Ethan Anderson, we could see, compare shot percentages. See, I'm, I guarantee you that's a slower motion than if he had a defender closing out on him. So, but that, it's something players need to understand. A catch and shoot should be shooting's muscle memory. So catch and shoot should be the same every single time whether you have a defender there or not. How was the timing on that jumper from Tobias Rodigo? Who's in rhythm? Go in. That doesn't mean you're going to make everything, but I think you eliminate almost the guaranteed miss of the long, slow release because you got time on the corner three. Here's what you called for. Playing through Mobley on the block. Gets left shoulder. Can't finish. The second crack at it. But see, you're already in there. Gathers, scores, and a free throw to follow for Isaiah Mobley. What's wrong with that? So now you're Dan Munson. You're saying, okay, well, we got to get out to Mobley on the three point line. So let's put a smaller guy on him, and then you run him into the post. Doesn't score the first time, gets his own rebound, gets it back, puts it in. He's gone over pretty wide. Rodegar takes the personal, his first. Mobley and Peterson with a dozen points each for USC. Seems like Mobley has more, doesn't he? It was only his second trip to the line. Remember, he made two yeah. out of three after he was fouled on the three-point jumper in the first half. Now he caps a three-point play. Long Beach State still has not scored since the half. Defense imposing their will here to the Dana Altman special looks a little different than non-con this year. We know that they'll be better come January, February, but have really struggled and lost some games that they would normally win. And then Harrison Ingram, best freshman in the conference. 12 points, almost seven rebounds. He has been as advertised. McDonald's All-American. Nice player. Anxious to see. I'll be at Stanford for the first time on Thursday. Looking forward to seeing them live. Go home and watch them against Oregon 
this afternoon. Here in L.A., we were tied 38 up at the half. The beach has missed its first four at this end since the break, allowing USC to grab the lead. Ten to shoot, ball in the hands of Joel Murray. Finds Eddie Scott back to Mobley. Here's Scott with two. Does he see it? Beats the buzzer. Misfires. Boogie Ellis on the weak side rebound. A little more zip to the USC defense coming out of halftime, right? A little challenging more. A little more activity. And when they, they are up and engaged and there's activity, their length start, starts to bother people. And I think it's bothering Long Beach right now. Good win. Mobley. Peterson extra pass. Good recovery by the beach. But good win. The teeth of the defense. I must have jinxed I him. I was going to say. He's that's, a two. Second, that's the second one I've only seen him miss. Offensive. And it goes against Joe Murray. USC locking in on defense, trying to preserve an unblemished record. Invented the term defense travels, like I made that up. And so, but it, it's true. When you're not playing great, your defense will travel and get you road wins. Apologies. Why are you shaking your head? You didn't know that, that I invented that thing? I mean, maybe you brought it to basketball, but I've, I've heard it in many other contexts. Well, I brought it to basketball, okay. yeah. I'm not saying I invented it overall. <laughs> With apologies to uh, the USC audience that watches every game here on Pac-12 Network. I feel like I say it every week, and she does good win on the back screen. Goes up and scores it in the second attempt. Watching that replay, Ethan Anderson is just a rock-solid winning role player mm -hmm. for, for USC. And I think he's a big part of why they have nine straight in the left-hand column. Well, the versatility and the flexibility that Andy Enfield has with his roster is, is something that I think we're going to see play out, especially once we get into conference play. You know, Ethan Anderson starting today because Murray, you know, Long Beach leading score, smaller guard. I think he has a better chance. But if you need to go big, you can put out on Polo. And so he's got a lot of options. And everyone's bought in defensively. You and I talked about this on Tuesday. They got a lot of dudes that deserve to play. And so if you come out and you're not defending and you're not giving the effort defensively, he's got somebody over uh, over there on the bench that will. And I think that's a, a driving thing for this USC team. As we were chatting, Traore, who's incredibly bouncy, got that left hand out to clear the way for his bucket. Snaps out of his drought. We can't repeat what he said, but it was an exhale. Yes. Uh, finally. And for USC to get to where it's trying to go, they need him to be a double figure scorer and their best perimeter threat. Yeah, the travel gives it back to SC. Well, nothing fancy here, just steps out, but a rhythm shot. And listen, his shots on Tuesday, JB, weren't way off. They just didn't go in. And But sometimes that get, gets in a player's head, and you start to press a little bit. Let's see if that one make doesn't jumpstart him and really get him going, because he can score. That was obvious the first time I was here. Like, this guy can go. Well, his slider's back because he carries it. <laughs> he, was, he was going back for more, Don. He had the McLean look in his eye. You could call a carry on almost every possession if you wanted to. I hate that call. 17 unanswered for USC going back to the ends of the opening half and Drew Peterson hit the time three. The Beach still trying to get in the second half scoring column. Now, this is pretty impressive by USC, and then I think Long Beach is a little bit of their spirit's been taken here. You know, now that it's a 14-point lead, see if they can make a run. But when USC wants to impose this on people, it's tough to deal with because you just got arms and size and length everywhere. Ethan Anderson on the bounce. Mobley matched up against Jordan Roberts. A lot of dribbling in the half court for USC on this trip. Mobley gets to where he's trying to go. Had it blocked from behind. Good play by Roberts defensively. Blocked it from behind. Boogie jumps in and deflects it into the beach bench. On Tuesday, JB, you and I were talking about how interesting and good the UCLA-USC matchups are going to be. 
You know what else is going to be interesting matchups and maybe the best matchup in the conference is USC Arizona Both big both defend both can get out transition and score I'm gonna be tuning in for those SC Arizona matchups for sure Shot fake pull up good hits Colin Slater's been quiet, but that was a fundamental jumper Ellis feeds Mobley Not this time long rebound though USC gets another bite out They're not all falling but USC is protecting its possessions and at least getting looks multiple yeah. looks sometimes And here's another offensive rebound See the difference for boogie that that last one he made catch and shoot that one off the bounce much harder to make threes off the bounce than it is off the catch Ethan whirling through the lane so 0 for 3 on the trip offensively for USC Slater rising Tip rebounds and Anderson goes to get it Peterson looking for Mobley oh, patient play in transition Isaiah gets the bucket, drew the assist. He knew it would be there eventually. Well, USC could beat you in a lot of different ways with a lot of different guys. Peterson up top to Mobley, stretching it out to a 14-point lead. And, and then they're not turning it over after getting those stops. That's why they've been able to push out a tie game at halftime now a 14-point lead Big student section today coming off of exams Lincoln Riley new football coach was in the building those uh, Very classy Christmas sweaters handed out to those who waited out on Figueroa to get in for this matchup Oh, they gave those out today Did you not get yours? I did not Did you get one? I might have a source <laughs> Sweet. You wear it to the airport tonight on your way to your Monday night football game tomorrow. Shot clock at five. Pull up. Colin Slater. Mansell goes up and hammers it home. Rare offensive rebound for Long Beach State in a while. They got a few early in the game, but SC have been doing a better job on their defensive board until that possession. Roman Sells, a veteran in this program, one of those local products, familiar with this rivalry. Joshua Morgan used to play on the other side of it. He screens for Boogie Ellis. Mobley the leading score. Jump stop in the lane. Mansell fires across the key. Ball fake Cobb. Just enough to alter his shot. Feeding the wing. Lucky three. Jadon Jones leads the beach in that category. Mansell's making an impact off the bench. He draws a foul. Well, here's the thing. If you're concerned if you're Andy Enfield, because I mentioned against Eastern Kentucky, they started playing the score in the second half when they got a lead. Now they got a lead again here this afternoon. And a couple possessions in a row, uncharacteristic. Long Beach getting extra looks at it. You don't want to know why there's a, a buzz in the crowd right now, Don. You do or, not or want to know, especially when I have a son that's a sophomore in college. <laughs> Let's just say. <laughs> you do not. I don't want to even see that. <laughs> Nothing of immediate concern. I will not way. be sleeping through the night tonight. Mansell's got a full head of steam. A bit too overzealous on that trip, well, but he's given the beach some yeah, energy. Yeah, I, you'll live with stuff like that if, if a guy's playing hard. Trying to make something happen here offensively against Morgan. Yeah, that's a travel. Dixon Waters in the game. He had a nice first half. Gave them some scoring punch at Boncolo back to Boogie Ellis. Max attacks. He's in that pivot foot. Five left for USC in the half court. Dixon Walker step back. Joshua Morgan claims it. Now finds a cutting freshman. 
And, and a travel before the foul. USC's got to get back to their ball movement, player movement. It's a lot of, let me see if I can get it. If I can't, then I pass it. That's not ball movement. That's, that's ISO looking for my own. I can't get it, so now I give it to you. Now I'm ball stopping, looking for my own. Player movement needs to happen to have good ball movement. He's looking for some early offense. Jadon Jones gets it a free throw on the second year freshman by way of nearby St. Anthony High School. Well, look, you did a good job if you're USC pushing this lead out to 14 with your defense not turning it over. But the game's not over. You're only up 12. Jones is going to the free throw line for three free throws. This could be under 10 with 10 minutes to go. Still a game. You haven't put them away yet. And it's a lesson that you think would be familiar given that they led Eastern Kentucky earlier this week by as many as 24 But Andy Enfield was forced to put his starters back in when it was cut to 10 You would think that would be a great teaching moment Almost a little embarrassing for the players that you think well We're gonna get to finish the game and you get yanked back out because Eastern Kentucky would they make like nine in a row in a, like a minute span So you would think that everybody would be locked in Coming into the game, even if you have a double digit lead, it wasn't quite the most entertaining 40 minutes in sports, with all due respect to the Colonels. Don. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how long that one's going to be able to, uh, they're going to keep going with that one. Deep touch from Mobley. Goes up and gets it, and puts it home on the second attempt. Well, he's a problem on the offensive end because of his versatility. I talked about it in the first half. He's now making threes consistently, but he can still do that. Just want to make sure he got that double double. Oh, I mentioned the energy of Roe Mansell. Nine point game. Long Beach probably thinks they can still win it, which they can. Weather that woeful shooting start coming out of the halftime break. They missed their first handful of shots. Only surveying, backing down Jones. Two defenders there. Finds Boogie Ellis. Gotta let that one rip, Boogie. Especially in the short clock situation. Bon Polo. Beats the buzzer from distance. Well, you get you get the bucket, which you needed to push it back to 12. But the concern is Boogie Ellis turning down shots. That's what you don't want to see happen. That he's got room and he's not letting it go. So maybe that was just one instance, but Boogie Ellis, if, if USC is going to win the Pac-12 Conference Championship, Boogie Ellis is going to have to score, no doubt about it. Tough catch by Mobley, post to post, back to Max. Another three for Agbonpolo. We keep talking about these things within the thing for USC. If Agbonpolo can get going from behind the line, and Peterson's now going, look out. Double figures now for Agbonpolo. Second game in a row. Defending Slater here, hands off to Mobley. Off one foot. Oh, impressive stuff from Colin Slater. Well, they're still playing. Waters down to Morgan. Had it poked away. Defense there by the beach. Had a chance to close. They've nibbled. Oh, right. no. And this one goes. Oh. And Slater has arrived. Back to a single digit deficit to the beach. Well, let's, let's remind everyone 27 at UCLA earlier in the year. Shooters coming alive here at Galen Center on a Sunday afternoon. At makes another tough shot. He had three tough shots in the first half that went down. But he is playing well here the last few for USC. That erased the last lead that the visitors have seen, although they're making a push here with less than eight to go in regulation. The more I watch Peterson, the more I appreciate how he gets from A to B with his spin move, with his crossover, with his pivot. Like, he covers a lot of ground. But why is he able to finish those plays? Because he's big for his position. 
if he was a 6'3 guy, all those spin backs and all that, that ain't flying. But because he's 6'8, he's able to get into the paint and still finish those plays over the top. A good look for Anderson after the timeout. Here comes the beach with Cobb on the move and Slater getting hot. And Mansell giving them a jolt off the bench. Well, let's see if USC can lock back in here defensively. Joel Murray catches Agbong Polo on the switch. 12 to shoot. Baseline drive, finding the corner. Cobb. He didn't want the three. Agbong Polo deflects. Jordan Roberts can't hit it. Offensive rebound, Traore. Not a bad defensive possession for USC, but you got to finish it with a rebound. Reset to 20. Six and a half to play. USC without a blemish on the season, looking for its 10th win. Slater crossing over on Mobley. Good take, no result. Tip rebound, out to the beach again. Another one. Shouldn't happen to USC with all their size, especially on the back line. Goodwin, Mobley, Peterson. This is now over a minute on possession for the beach as Murray challenges Mobley. Now that's one way of looking at it. You could say they wasted a bunch of time in trying to score, but especially to come away empty handed. Right. You don't want to be giving up that many offensive rebounds. Peterson from the corner. I think we can stop talking about Drew Peterson's woes from behind the line officially now. Back to a double digit advantage. It must be. Maybe he upped his caffeine. He didn't tell us that. The iced coffee with cream and sugar. Like a four shot instead of a three <laughs> shot or something. Slater lines up a triple. Very little margin now for Long Beach State if they're going to pull this upset. Well, time and score for USC. Up 11. Don't need to rush anything. Let's move it. Get a good shot. Anderson on the crossover. And Bunk Polo will wait. Attacks off the bounce. Mobley sets his feet and fires. Did he take more time than normal? Didn't have Maybe. it on the stopwatch. Maybe. Murray trailing, leaning, scoring. It's hard to get yourself when you know no one's around to not shoot it differently, but I'm telling you, if, if somebody had that stat, it would be staggering how much that corner three is missed because they take too much time letting it go. Ethan Anderson. Uh, you can see from our angle, Chavez Goodwin just discarded his matchup. He's guilty of the offensive rebounding foul. It's been a lot of fouls in the second half either. For as much as USC kind of up their level, he's good without foul. But they've been pretty good all year about not fouling and still guarding. I guess when you're long like they are, you don't need to be physical and use your hands because everything's up high. That's the third on Goodwin. Four on each team. You saw Coach Munson having a word with Roman Sell, who's back in the game. Down screen for Slater. Peterson contests. And Slater really wanted that foul. Good rebound by Mobley there in traffic. He's gone cold at this end, but they've been getting deep possessions again. They're making the beach play the score and the clock well, Even if you lose all the clock and don't get a make it's still in your favor Boogie, bottoms, But they wipe it away Another offensive foul against USC Both coaches frustrated yeah. did he beat him to the spot let's take a look That was an offensive foul and a flop by the defender. <laughs> He's in here shortly. Because now you got Peterson making threes. Akbon Polo made a couple today. I'm surprised that Evans is favorite NBA player. You are? <laughs> no. <laughs> Especially not with the car he's driving. Well, maybe he'll, yeah, I was going to say, maybe he'll share some of that rookie of the year money he's going to get. It's looking like Slater trying to put it up to Mansell. Great hit ahead. Agbon Polo. 
a foul. On your side of the court, Tony Padilla had a foul on the recovery. That was in. That was a mistake, JB, that Agbonk Polo got away with. He should not have grabbed the rim there. How many times have you seen a guy grab the rim, get hung up, and land vertical or horizontal on the ground? Like a wrist or worse. Glad nothing happened here because, look, he's out of control. He should have never grabbed that rim. Looks like Joel Murray is okay as well. That's Murray crossing and getting a good piece of the ball there yeah. on his contest. I think still a foul, though. Yes. His third. Glad no one got hurt there. You always see those plays developing, right, JB? One guy's got it. He's going the full head of steam. Here comes the defender. You hope the offensive player doesn't get in the air before the defender challenges it. Those usually don't end up well. You hinted earlier about the mild concern you have with USC. Free throw shooting, not a team strength, not an Agbon Polo strength. He gets one out of two, however, to push it back to double digits. Well, you just know that they're going to be in tight games, especially when we get into conference play. So does that become a factor? Agbon Polo, way too fundamental a shooter yeah. to be at 54% for a season. That number is going to come up. Slater takes the ball screen. Step back on Mobley. Now he rises, can't hit. Tap out for the beach. Back taps. Been there for Long Beach here of late. Roberts. Checked by Agbon Polo. There's a good example of what you're talking about. Contest. Let him take the low percentage shot. Clear the glass. And Boogie back in there getting rebounds. Rebounds good. Rebounds well for his position. USC will keep it. USC might be 18 seconds a good possession and a bucket away from holding off Long Beach State. If they score here late in the clock, I would say it'd be awfully difficult for Long Beach to... They can maybe make it interesting, but can they come all the way back with only two and a half left? Boogie, long two. The beat's still in it. We got a score on almost every trip here, though. Well, Ellis steals it right back. Great anticipation. Isaiah on the move. Mobley rinses it with the rights. Look, if you're struggling offensively, Man, you sell at the other end. You can still affect the game. Boogie Ellis in the passing lane gets the turnover. Ahead to Mobley for the dunk. Unfortunately, nobody got back on defense for USC. Reach around from behind. See, everyone's trailing the play. All five guys. Long Beach didn't trail the play, so they had minimally top 12 USC team. Put it this way. You look at the top three in the Pac-12, that triumvirate, the only opponent that's beaten Arizona, SC, or UCLA. Gonzaga. That's saying something. Ten-point lead in the ball. Can they close it out at Galen Center? Agbong Polo, middle of the floor. Breaks the timeline, finds Boogie Ellis. In Early three. three. Yeah, that's one that has to go down. Right? I'm in rhythm, JB. Did you see it? He was sliding to his left. I'm in rhythm. I don't think about it. I just catch and go. But yes, important shot to finish this game. Even if he doesn't get another attempt, he finished the game with a make. And maybe he stops thinking about his offense. And that's the other thing I didn't mention early in the game. You know, when you start thinking about offense is when it becomes challenging. Just play. Whenever I got into slumps when I was playing, which wasn't very often, but the one or two times I did, <laughs> all you think about is playing hard and playing defense and not think about the offensive end, and then it just comes. It comes back. You're not thinking about it. You're not pressing. And that's where Boogie Ellis needs to get to. And there have been some great examples of that in this second half. Clutch rebounds, that poke yeah. away steal, that leads to an assist and a Mobley dunk in transition. He's made those winning plays even before he hit that three. Cobb at the stripe. One other 
again, a talking point to circle back on nine first half turnovers for USC, only four since the break. They played with the lead ever since it's they pretty, came out of the lot. It's pretty simple, JB, with USC. If they play hard or, and are engaged defensively and they're not turning it over, you probably ain't beating them. Ellis, low pass to Mobley, three to shoot, off one foot. That should cap it, Isaiah Mobley. 21 and 12. He is really playing well, isn't he? And this is how you know USC is really good. It's because their performance this afternoon on, okay, not great by their standard, and they have a chance to win it by double digits. Yeah. I, I would call this, what, a B minus maybe, C plus. Because of the first half turnovers, the first half lack of intensity defensively. But you see, if they flip it and they have a switch that they can flip, you don't want to get to that where you're always flipping the switch. But if you can, when it's not your best night, you can still win games. A lot of teams don't have the switch to flip. Murray and Slater now combined 25, which is solid, but far from the number they put up against the Bruins earlier on this well, calendar. Well, think about it. They combined for 57 against UCLA, and they still lost by 21. Jones and Mansell off the beach bench after the made free throw. You could take this clock all the way down and not even shoot it at this point. Anderson dribbled into trouble, though. That's the one place he couldn't go. Broke the timeline and was trapped. They had a timeout to utilize to bail him out of that predicament. A pretty good trap by Long Beach in the corner. There with 15 points, backing up the 21 from Mobley. At Boncolo, the other Trojan in double figures with 11. The Beach not giving the foul, trying to get that trap and steal. Over to Drew Peterson. And now over to the Beach, so they do get the takeaway with 42 seconds remaining. Maybe Long Beach should have been pressing the whole second half, huh? Bothered USC a little bit here late. Dan Munson will bring his shooters back into the game. Turnover number 14 for USC, but again, nine of those came in the opening session. First half, that was tied 38 apiece. And no fouls here for USC. You can live with score. No, you don't want to stop the clock at this point. Slater. Can't get it to fall. Out to Murray. I'm surprised he passed on it. Wanted Jones. Clock dwindling. Murray from mid range. Another back tap. It's all just bookkeeping at this point with USC in front by 11. I think that'll do it. And they're on their way to winning their first 10 games. This was a tricky one, though, Don, for all kinds of reasons. From Lincoln Riley being here to hey, exam week and everything in between. They're not all going to be Picassos, man. It's win and move on to the next one. Post, we talked about it, post-finals. Pearson likes that dunk attempt away. Why is everyone still playing? <laughs> Let's get it across half court. But post-finals isn't an easy one. So you win and move on. Got Irvine on Wednesday as we inch closer to conference play after the first of the year.